another episode of Zola Tank Boys. In this episode, guys, we're setting up the 10 gallon nano. Let's go. Ah! All right, reefers. Like I said, in this episode, we're gonna set up the 10 gallon nano tank. Now, if you guys have been following this channel for some time, you know that this tank has seen many, many different variances from being full of coral to for a small point holding some anemones. Uh, but as you guys can see, this tank has been shut down for some time. So today we're actually gonna set this tank up. But before we jump into that, don't forget the easiest way to support this channel is to like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and hit the bell. That way you know every time we upload a video. Regarding equipment, guys, this is gonna be one of the easiest, most simplest um, setups. So for starters, I'm gonna use the stock return pump. Now this tank is an innovative marine 10 gallon tank. So, cool little rimless style. It does come with a lid. So in comparison to other tanks, you don't have to build one, which will keep all the fish in here. Also, I do have a filter sock. Now, regarding sand, I'm gonna use Carib Sea Fiji Pink. This is, I believe, what is this, 10 pounds? Yeah, 10 pounds. This should be enough to give us, hopefully, at least an inch and a half of sand. So if we do wanna get some of that cleaner crew that kinda goes under the sand, this will be good and of course lighting. So I did have a Kessel A80 around the house, so this is gonna be the main setup. So you might be wondering, what are we gonna put in this tank? So guys, in this tank, it's pretty much gonna be the house of one clown and anemones. Now, the reason this one's gonna be more permanent in comparison to the other times that I had set it up is because I have the space. Um, back in the day when I set it up, it was in an awkward place in my office, so it wasn't really practical for me. So this is gonna be a pretty good spot for it where I could have it for long term. These anemones are splitting like crazy guys. I started with one bubble tip rainbow and a black widow and we're up to I think seven or eight. So they're running around the Red Sea 170 and I can't really put corals there. So I figured this will be the next best solution. So let's do it. All right guys, so first thing we're gonna do is add the sand. So let's try and not make a mess. Now, I don't need to cycle this tank because I've had um, some rock cooking in my sump for some time. So, and it's been there for a couple months, probably about four or five months. So the rock is cured, it's ready, full of bacteria, and I'm doing about a five or 10 gallon water change for my office tank. So this water's gonna have, this tank's gonna have good water, good rock. So it's, it's pretty plug and play. And this is live sand. It's gonna be a little wet. Yeah, this is actually perfect sand. Yeah. I thought actually thought I wasn't gonna be that deep, but this is really good. All right, guys, now that we have this here, next thing we're gonna do is a water change. So we have the water and I'm gonna pull the sand out of the sun. I'm trying to be as clean as possible because this thing usually is You're gonna pull the messy. sand out of the sump? The, I'm gonna pull the rock out of the sump. Did I okay. say sand? Yeah, you said sand. We're not pulling sand out of the sump, guys. Don't put sand in your sump. <laughs> I always like to have an extra rock or two in the sump. Um, not a lot, because you know if it doesn't get a lot of fluid, it will cause some detritus and of course some nitrate issues. But I always like to have something just in case I need to replace a rock or I have a new tank because I'm always setting stuff up. So it gives me some, some options without having to pull from the display. So here we have this really nice rock. I don't recommend grabbing it with, with your fingers. I'm gonna do it because I don't have gloves, but if you have gloves, do it. Because if you guys follow me on Instagram, the other day I got blasted by bristle worms from a rock that was in the sun. But I don't mind. All right. Like I said, this rock has been cooking for some time. Follow me. So, I kinda think that looks good like that. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. 
That way there's a lot of room in the front. It's kind of tall. I think that looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Should I rotate it? I think it looks good because it still leaves a lot of swimming area here. If I lay it flat, it's gonna take up a lot of real estate, but this looks good. Now let's harvest some water so we can fill this puppy up. All right guys, water change time. So I got five gallons of fresh salt. Take a look. This is the clown that's gonna go in that tank. So he doesn't swim a lot. All he does is lay in the anemone. So he would be perfect for um, this build essentially. And there we have the anemones up here. Lights just came on, so they're probably not even open. But there we currently have one, two, three, four. And guys, this is pretty good because this tank needs a water change. I like to do water changes every week or every other week. So this is a pretty good chance to, to do that. We're also going to try and catch the clown because... Um, it's going to be kind of hard either way, so if the water is a little lower, it'll make it a little bit more seamless to catch it. Uh, be super careful pulling these limbs off because I do not want to damage them. There's one. These usually come off super easy. You just want to be careful. You want to make sure the foot's intact, like this one. Look at that. Full, no holes or blemishes. This is a nice rainbow bubble tip. And then we got the last one here. See this one? Can you mix the rainbow with the red ones? I haven't had any issues with them. And this one looks pretty good too. All right, so there we have that. Now something I wanna try and do is catch this clown. Now we're gonna catch the maroon clown. This is either gonna be super easy or a pain in the butt. So let's see what we got. We don't need this here anymore. Oh, there's another anemone here. What the heck? See, these guys split and you don't even know. One, two, three, four. I think so. What the heck? Yeah. But you had something. I did, but I didn't see this guy. I'm peeling him off. Yep. Looking good. All right, guys, so we got the water here. I'm actually going to use the same method. I'm going to siphon the water into the tank. In theory, this should make it... There shouldn't be a lot of cloudiness. All right, guys, so a lot of people would probably see this and say, dude, you're crazy. These anemones are going to melt. Anemones don't do good in, like, new tanks. Guys, remember, um, this is not a new tank. It's pretty much like an instant cycle. I've done this many times before. So the anemone should be fine. And these are all captive, braid, ca captive raised anemones. So these all came from splits from my tank. 
What is that, four? Popping it off with fresh salt, so it's probably gonna be two gallons worth. Um, so this should be pretty good. And the cool thing is, guys, 90% of this water is water that the enemies were in. So it shouldn't be new water. Almost there. Okay, I think that might be close to enough. Let's turn on the pump. All right, guys, so I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Zola Tank Boys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Until next time, Zola Tank Boys out. Ah!